There is a tangible identity crisis today within the professing Christian circles, and many seem not to know what the church really is, which further exposes the lack of Bible knowledge that exists among many who claim the name of Christ today. Most of you may intellectually realize the truth of what I'm about to say, but this certainly needs to be reinforced. The Bible identifies the church as individual believers, members of the body of Christ, and there is no room to conclude that buildings are the church of the Bible, neither are man-made organizations the actual church that the Word of God acknowledges. But this has become a very big problem for many in these last days. Jesus has warned us to judge not according to appearance, but to judge righteous judgment in John 7, 24. The very nature of the Bible's definition of church should tell us that it can't be determined by physical appearance alone. Yet this is exactly what's happening. People will enter into a church building and they suddenly become the real church simply by attendance within the structure. If you don't realize that this is a serious problem today, ask the Lord to open your eyes and that you may help stand for the truth amongst those who should know it already. I have heard numerous pastors or teachers openly proclaiming that their entire congregations are saved, and many church laymen declare the necessity of church attendance to be saved, but that would be a works-based salvation, not one of grace. As usual, we need to follow the Word of God for guidance in this, so let me open up the Bible's point of view on these matters. For the sake of the video length, I will make mention of some things quickly, but the scriptures will be listed for you in the, in the description below, and I urge you to take advantage of this resource. First, we find a powerful direct quote from Jesus, which tells us that real worship has nothing to do with a building or a place, but that believers must worship in spirit and in truth, and this is from John chapter 4. And because God has given believers his own Holy Spirit, we are now, even within ourselves, considered to be the temple of God, as is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and chapter 6. Secondly, the Bible shows us that there are problems within churches, and the synagogues are also a type of church to be considered by example. During Jesus' ministry here, he regularly ran into evil spirits in these synagogues, and once people in his hometown synagogue tried to kill him. But there are contentions found in churches also, even after the ministry of Jesus. And you can see some of them listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and 3 John 9 and 10. And there are warnings of deceit coming from within professed bodies of believers, like we find in Acts chapter 20 and 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Thirdly, let's consider what the Lord says about buildings of so-called worship. Even the temple itself was only considered to be a visual reminder of God and the need to seek him. In places like Acts chapter 7, 1 Kings chapter 8, and 2 Chronicles chapter 6, we are told how insufficient buildings are for an infinite God, even the temple of Solomon. And God made it clear that if his people turned from following him, he would throw this house they had built out of his sight, which the Lord did when it was destroyed by Rome in AD 70. And the Lord shows yet again his desire for the hearts of mankind and his lack of regard for our own physical efforts in Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. And it reads there, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made. And all these things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. But lastly, the church is plainly identified to be Christian believers in the New Testament in a number of places. Four times we find Paul sending regards to the church that is in the house of certain believers, which makes it clear that it is not a physical building he's referring to. Yet one of the worst things about this mistake is that we start looking to organizations and not God directly. Jesus made a direct way to pray to our Father in heaven, he is that way, and he even gave us his own spirit, but instead we turn toward men without a second thought, and we assume that God is leading them. By this we are slowly but steadily removed from our fellowship with God. Please consider this warning that I'm giving to you now, and be jealous for your personal relationship with God. It is truly a walk of faith, not sight, and we shouldn't rely on the well-intended, but flawed men that we can see. I pray that God would bless this message for your use.
Have a good day.